Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic today. Let's do it. What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Please remember to like, share, say hi, and subscribe. A couple of years ago, I was in a small John boat heading back to shore from a mooring buoy. Like a dumbass, I didn't attach the kill switch clip to me before setting off. It was starting to get a little windy, and there was some chop on the water. I opened the throttle a little too much, and the boat surged sideways into the chop. I tried to compensate and overcorrect, and the port stern dipped into the water, completely throwing me off balance and into the water. Now, this boat is just doing counterclockwise circles around me, with an almost wide open throttle and prop at an angle that caused the circle to get tighter and tighter. At one point, it was coming straight at me, and my only option was to swim straight down as much as I could. As if in slow motion, the boat went right over me. I could see the rotation of the prop, and see the bubbles stream clearly. I popped back up, and realized the only chance I had was to either swamp the boat, or try to pull the kill switch. Since I am inside the spiral of death on the port side of the boat, that means the throttle arm is extended to the starboard which also means the propeller is angled to the port stern, right where my feet and lower legs will be if I'm going to pull this off. After several attempts, I finally am able to get a hold of the port side of the boat and hang on, slowly inching further and further toward the stern, always waiting for my feet to get tangled in the propeller since the momentum of the spiral is pulling my legs under the boat. Finally, I can almost reach the kill switch, which in Hollywood fashion, my fingertips can just brush, but not quite grasp. Falling to grab it the first few times, I simply lunge for it and grab and pull. The boat stops. Everything that was in the boat, oars, clothing, me, are all floating in the water. My friend, who saw the whole thing as pale as a ghost, his eyes open, unblinking in shock. I managed to retrieve pretty much everything except a couple of our locks and swim the boat to shore and pull it up on the logs and rocks. When I saw my wife, I was almost in tears. She had no idea anything had happened. My friend practically shoves her out of the way and hugs me, also almost in tears. And that, my friends, is why boat safety is important. Always clip on the kill switch. Almost kidnapped when I was eight. My mom was taking a nap and told me I could play in the backyard. I, of course, went and played in the front yard. Two men in a car pulled up and the man in the passenger seat got out. He started walking into my yard with a piece of paper and asked me if I could look at his map and help him with directions. While he was talking, I looked behind him at the driver and noticed he was looking all around nervously. I was already terrified of being kidnapped, so I booked it to the backyard and ran inside. I laid in bed with my mom, shaking until she woke up from her nap. Never told her because I wasn't supposed to be in the front yard to begin with. I was always told adults never ask kids for help and to probably save my life. The image of the nervous driver is forever burned in my brain. Car accident. I was 15 and riding with a friend who just got his license, so we were cruising around town. A full-size truck ran a light and T-boned us at 40 miles per hour, so we flipped over. We had to break out of the back window to get out, and when we got out, both our phones broke, so we couldn't call anyone. When we finally got a phone to use, the other guys, after he finished calling the police and shit, I couldn't reach either of my parents, and the ambulance said they couldn't do anything till they got express permission. The only reason we survived is because my friend was driving his dad's truck instead of his mom's small car like he normally did. I took the brunt of the injuries with only getting shredded by the glass, dislocated shoulder, and a concussion. I was about 14 and home alone for a few hours. The dog wanted to play, so I started playing with her, which at some point meant I was chasing her around the dining room table. I tripped and fell and put my arms up by my face to prevent me from shattering it on the floor. Ended up with my fingers at the base of my eye where I landed. Popped my eye out of the socket just a bit. Everything I saw was cross-eyed. In my panic, I pushed it as hard as I could to get it to go back in. Felt a little pressure on the inside, then I could see again. I felt scary. Went hiking once with my dog. Got to the end of the trail and went a bit further to a cliffside overlook. Hung out for a bit and then got a funny feeling. The whole feeling of the forest shifted. 
I heard a voice call my dog's name in a kind of whisper shout, but I wrote it off as half the joint I smoked, making me paranoid. Then I heard it again, and my dog looked in the direction I heard it from. That's when I grabbed his leash and started hoofing it down the trail. As I was leaving, a voice entered my head. It wasn't my normal internal voice. It was pissed and was saying, get out, in no uncertain terms. I played with it internally as I was stumbling down the hillside and eventually it dissolves out of my mindset as I got off the trail that leads me to the spot and onto the main trail. I decided to balls up and keep going down a bit to the main trail, but I turned around after less than a mile of walking because I kept the feeling that something was watching me. After turning around, me and my dog were just about to round the last turn before getting to our car. There was a large rock face to our right that we were about to turn past. Suddenly, a shot rang out throughout the air and I heard the zing of a bullet fragment passing very close to my head. I ducked down and shouted to hold fire, but no one ever called back. After a couple minutes, I grabbed my dog and turned the corner, jogging straight for my car. I know that there's a logical explanation for the shot that went past me, but in the moment, it really felt like whatever was in the forest was sending me one last F off and don't come back. Have you ever had anything like this happen to you where there's like a voice or a feeling and your alarm bells go off and everything's up to a hundred and you don't know where it came from? It's pretty wild. Been in a mass shooting. Several people were shot, including a guy next to me, and a bullet nearly got me but hit the wall behind me. If I was an inch to the left, it would have hit me in the neck or and I would not be typing this. I've had plenty of other scary experiences, but watching an innocent person die due to the actions of some murderous asshole is just a whole other level of scary. I'll never forget how one second everything was normal, lovely evening, and the next was chaos with people on the ground injured, bleeding, or dead. I was walking my dog with my father. We were pretty close to our house, and as we were walking down, I heard a voice identical to my mother's voice call out my dog's name. My dog heard it. My father heard it. I heard it. We thought my mother may have walked up to meet us before we came back. My heart sunk when we didn't see her the entire walk back. We confronted my mother about it. She denied it and was freaked out. She thought we were lying, of course. This is one of the experiences that you cannot explain. I saw another post similar to this talk about it. So glad I'm not the only one who has experienced something like this. You can say it's fake all you want. If I heard someone talk about it, I wouldn't think it's fake. If my dog and father didn't hear it, I would have thought that I was hallucinating. It was late at night and I was tired, but because my dog heard it and recognized the voice and my father heard it, I knew it actually happened. Swimming in a lake and had a massive hypertension attack and the pressure in my body started filling my lungs with bodily fluid. So I'm in the middle of a lake with my lungs emitting a phlegmy crackle and having trouble getting enough oxygen in me to keep swimming. I managed to get to the nearest store. The paramedics and fire and rescue extracted me by a hiking trail, so it took a bit to get to me. When they slapped the BP monitor on me, I had been out of the water for almost 30 minutes, and my blood pressure was still something like 260 over 160. Whoa. They hauled ass to the hospital while pumping drugs into me. I ended up leaving the hospital five days later when they finally got my BP under 150 with seven different drugs in my system. There's no explanation for why this happened. There's no indication I've had hypertension long term. I'm down to five different prescriptions now. This happened back in June of this year. I was working four 10 hour days and finished my last shift on the week. I had been watching some Netflix on my Xbox after shift finally got too tired and went to bed at 8.30 p.m. Mind you, I was staying at my grandpa's cottage. My job site was only a 15-minute drive from there. 8.30 p.m. comes and I shut everything off before going to bed. The TV is off and the Xbox is off too. I wake up around 2 or so hours later and hear some voices, right? The bedroom I'm sleeping. You can see the garage from the windows. It's a three-car garage, right? I wake up and the rightmost garage door is opening and closing. And I'm thinking, holy F, someone's trying to steal the effing ATVs. So I get myself out of bed, throw on some pants, and storm outside. This garage door is just opening and closing right in front of my face. I eventually get enough courage and step into the garage. 
There's nothing causing it to open and close, so possibly some power surge, eh? I go back inside, and I mention the voices, right? The TV is on, and it's playing a Netflix movie on my Xbox, so I'm thinking, F, eh, that's a little odd. And I kind of noped right out of there, packed my shit up, and drove into town at 11.30pm or so at night. The TV part still makes me suspicious, right? Like, you gotta turn the TV on and Xbox, navigate to Netflix, and choose your profile, and then select a movie. I made sure that it was off before I went to bed. Maybe after working four 10-hour shifts, your body was really tired and you forgot to turn the Xbox off? I don't know. Maybe there was a power surge causing all of that to happen, or maybe you had home intruders that like to mess with you. Or a ghost. Having my search and rescue group be attacked by a grizzly. I was working as an EMT in Alberta, Canada. I was part of an SAR group who were going to look for a hunter who got attacked by a grizzly bear while hunting bighorn sheep. Dude got a sheep and was in the process of cutting it up to take back to his quad when he got mauled. Only ended up with cuts, scrapes, and a close tib fib fracture near his ankle. Anyways, my group consisted of four fish and wildlife officers, two local redneck brothers who lived in the remote area we were in, my partner, and I. We were hiking up a shell rock creek. Keep in mind, it was mid-September in Grizzly Country near Jasper National Park. It was about 11 p.m. when our group was attacked by an old sow grizzly bear. At first, all we could hear was her loud roar and trees and branches snapping as she charged us. Middle of the night, in the mountains, under thick brush, we couldn't see her. The fish and wildlife officers and our local guides had firearms and started firing at the bear. My partner and I ducked to the ground. We wouldn't get shot by accident. They dropped the bear just as she was about to jump down into the creek. One of the guides had to jump out of the way of the bear would have uh, landed on him. We still had to find our patient, so GPS marked the bear's location and kept hiking. After hiking upwards another mile or two, we saw our guy. Only problem was, we had to cross a tiny mountain goat path that shimmied along the rock face. It was about an 80 foot drop, but we didn't know that because it was really dark. Got across it, got to our patient. My partner and I started tending to his wounds and getting warm and stabilized. As we were doing this, we heard something moving outside of the line of sight. So our guides and wildlife officers formed a defensive circle around us with the firearms drawn and lights pointing outwards. Eventually, whatever it was moved off. Now, due to weather, we couldn't get a helicopter to land and we couldn't pack the guy down the mountains. So instead, we built a fire and camped out on the side of the mountain all night. We even cooked part of a sheep over the fire and ate it as we cooked. It was super good and probably what kept morale up. Well, finally come morning, the weather cleared and a chopper was able to pick up the patient plus my partner and I. Everyone else had to hike back down. Got back to station, went to have a shower, and I looked like I had shell shock. It was a wild night, and I had never been more scared than when the 400-pound monster was coming at us from the shadows. I've been through a few scary things. Life has really shown me how awful people can be. I was probably in preschool. My childhood is a little blurry and my older sister would get pretty violent with me. She's about six years old. Looking back, I have no clue why I was left home alone with her so often. I have memories of her chasing me through the house with a knife, which unfortunately wouldn't be the last person in my life to do so. Locking me in my parents' dark bathroom with the light switch was on the outside of the door. I had a pretty extreme fear of the dark. One time she put a pillow over my face and sat on it for as long as she could, like she was actually trying to suffocate me. That time, I managed to get away and run out back. That was a bad idea, because then she locked me out, and it was winter in Colorado, and it'd be a few hours before my parents got home. I was wearing shorts, a tank top, and had no shoes. This is all pretty tame compared to the stuff I went through later in life, but as a kid who could barely talk, I was in speech therapy for years because no one could understand me, let alone stand up for myself. It was really scary. I had one of the most horrific dreams ever. Basically, it was just me harming myself in brutal ways, and I could actually feel it. I was going to end it with a rifle to the head, but decided to just go inside. The dream haunts me to this day. I wasn't depressed or suicidal or had any bad mental illnesses at the time. I hate how your mind can create the most terrifying images. I accidentally ate one of my dad's edibles, 100 milligrams about. 
I was high for 72 hours in Chicago. While high, I was walking to McDonald's when a homeless man started talking to me. I just smiled at him and walked away because I was zooted out of my mind and had no idea what was happening. He didn't like that, so he started following, then grabbed me and tried pulling me into an alley, so I ran away, but he chased me, screaming he was going to rape and murder me or some shit. I'm not a woman. I just appear very feminine, 5'2", and apparently my face shape. Soon enough, he realized I'm a dude and backed off, but I keep thinking about what if I was a woman, or what if he didn't notice, etc., etc. Definitely one of the scariest experiences. Well, I think male or female, zooted or sober as a nun, that would be frightening for anyone, so glad you made it out okay. Wild times. I nearly drowned when I was a kid. I went with my older sister to one of her friend's houses who had a swimming pool. There was a bunch of other teenagers there as well, making me the youngest one at the pool party. I was sitting on an inner tube floating along when some guy decided it would be fun to go down to the pool slide and land on the inner tube I was on. Well, he landed on it all right. The impact pushed my upper body through the hole and under the water, but the guy who landed on me had my legs pinned on the inner tube. I was stuck that way for a very long time, kicking, trying to yell, and pushing on the guy, but he didn't budge. Someone else jumped on him. I could feel the impact, which didn't help matters. I kept kicking like crazy and pushing, and I could feel that really strong urge to take a breath building up fast. Little by little, I managed to get my legs out from under that guy and quickly scrambled upwards, but not before I took a small breath just when I was about to get above the water surface. I'm hacking up a lung and the water I took in, and the guy who pinned me is laughing and completely unaware of what just happened. I could see someone sitting on him, and no one seemed to notice until I started crying while I was trying to get out of the pool by pulling myself up on its lip. I might have been a kid, but I still knew what almost happened because of some careless prick. Plus, having a teenage boy land on my stomach and chest hurt. My sister came over when she saw me crying, and I told her what happened. She gave that guy a verbal lashing, and I remember him blowing it off saying, He's fine. We didn't stay any longer after that, and walked home. I will never forget just how scared and panicked I was, and how close I came to not being here today. All because of some asshole who thought it would be funny to slide down onto a kid that was riding an inner tube. Years ago, when weed was still illegal in Canada, I would sometimes hotbox in my car in the dead of night. I had a perfect spot at the entrance of a forest service road where there was a little nook I could park my car in and be completely unseen by any vehicles that might come by. Anyway, one cold winter night, I went to my spot, turned on the radio, and lit up. After 15 to 20 minutes, I was feeling pretty cold, so I fired my car back up for a while. This was a critical error, because the exhaust and the cold air was very visible and gave away my position like a beacon. I turned the car off. 15 seconds later, I detected the refraction of approaching headlights. It was a cop. The red and blue lights came on, and I knew I was screwed. I had just resupplied the other day, and stupidly kept the entire ounce in my car. I rolled down my windows to say hello and hoped for the best. After we finished our greetings, he told me right away that he could clearly smell the weed, and that I could either give it to him, or he would arrest me. I asked him to repeat that again, and thought about it for a moment before reaching into my console and giving him a half-ounce baggie. I thought about giving him the other half too, but decided not to. He asked me if it was a personal amount, gave me a little lecture about how it's not legal yet. He told me I was free to go, but he was concerned about whether I was good to drive. I told him I was, and he said he will watch me and decide. So I drove off, and that was that. Our cops here are pretty cool guys, honestly. 